guys, Jay here from Kill the Cast. Uh, didn't get a news episode out this week. Me and Jerry both kind of had stuff going on in our lives. Um, so I've got this kind of bonus video for you. I was at a pinball convention and one of the vendors had these old 90s uh, movie trading cards packs. So I bought a few and I figured it'd be fun just to kind of open them for nostalgia's sake. Uh, I'm also recording with a brand new microphone that was given to me as a birthday present. Uh, super high quality. I'm actually sitting about a uh, this length away from it, four feet, a foot or so, uh, and the tests came out great. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully the audio quality is better for you guys on your end to kind of up the quality of the show. Uh, so that said, let's kind of get right to it. So we'll start with just on top here. We have got Ghostbusters 2. There is eight cards, one sticker, and one stick of bubble gum. So we will get those open. And these are actual leftover card packs from the 90s. They are not reproductions or anything, so who knows what's inside. Uh, look at that. Look, look, at, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at Look at Look at that. Ah, 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 ah. That's disgusting. Disgusting. So let's see here. All right. We're going to go through these. Uh, commercial. It's the scene with the commercial from... Uh, with Lewis and Janine there. That's pretty fun. Little factoid on the back. TV commercial part two. Janine Melnitz, the Ghostbusters once and future receptionist secretary, Gal Friday, plays Lewis Tully's wife in a hastily devised TV commercial. Continued on the next exciting card. Is there another commercial card in here? Did I put them out of order? No, there is no other commercial card. So you have to find that next card to figure it out. Now we got card 64 uh, towards the end of the movie there. That's kind of funny. That's a, Let's see what that one says. Dana storms into the Candlelit Museum studio in search of her baby. She finds the possessed Yanos preparing the final stage of the unholy ritual that would turn Vigo to tangible life. Uh, sinister Caller. This is when the power goes out and Yanos is like, How are you doing? Can I uh, have your baby, please? And then uh, he, doesn't, he uh, steals her by turning into a weird none uh, nanny thing that can fly because Ghostbusters. Uh, Dana opens the door and sees Yanos standing in the hall. Eerily lit by a red emergency spot at the end of the hallway, he looks slightly dazed and even creepier than usual because homeboys are creepier. Spangler means business. Yeah, he does. Do, re, me, Egon. Card number 31. Egon dashes across the courtroom to the exhibit table then hastily straps on his proton pack. The familiar, the familiar Ghostbuster gear was being displayed as the trial as evidence. Next we got Heads Up. This is when the uh, the mink coat turns. Is that not focusing very well? That is not focusing very well. It's when the mink coat turns into uh, possession, gets all possessed. The society woman's coat comes alive. Mink heads pop up out of the thick fur, snarling, barking, and yapping. Their sharp little teeth biting the air. A nearby doorman yanks the coat off the woman's back, throws it to the ground, and it starts stomping away. That was a fun scene. So this is a uh, this is the sticker card, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, it's different. It's just the Ghostbuster logo. If that is actually a sticker, I might throw that on something. We'll see. Widescreen SFX shot. <laughs> Possessed by Vigo, bolts of cosmic energy shoot from the eyes of Vigo's portrait and enter Yanos's body. Now a human chalice of all-consuming evil, Yanos screams and falls to his knees. Poor Yanos. Back in action. We got three courtroom cards. The last one's a courtroom card, too. Good old uh, Dan Aykroyd there. Our heroes flip the power switches on their packs and draw their particle throwers. Set for full neutrons in stream, yells Ray. They switch on the throwers and turn, the face, and turn to face the raging phantasms. And then lastly, no order in the courtroom. That's, uh, again, one another part of the courtroom scene. It's actually a really good sequence. Uh, the astonished prosecutor is swept along by psychic turbulence as the Scolari operations continue to lay waste to the courtroom. So I'm pretty sure this has to be the sticker card, but I don't understand how to make it a, a sticker here. So who knows? But those are the Ghostbuster cards. So we'll put those to the side, and we'll move on here. Let's go with Tales from the Crypt. It's a good show. There's supposedly supposed to be a reboot in the works, but it uh, it never got off the ground, unfortunately. Well, that's cool. Uh, on the back of these, actually, 
Oh, this is cool. So it's a mix of... It looks like it's a mix of cards. Here, here, we'll just go through them. So we've got uh, the image on the front there, which is a scene from one of the episodes. This blood's for you. And then it has the episode on the back. This one's called The Trap, episode number 27. And this complicated story about an insurance scam that goes awry. Who plays the dead man's wife? Who plays the coroner? And who plays the deceased? Oh, it's trivia. Okay. And then on the back... Uh, Terry Garr plays the wife, Bruno Kirby plays the coroner, and Bruce McGill plays the part of the deceased. So that's cool. We've got some trivia on there. No gum in this one, thank God. I don't have to put that in my mouth. The Crips of Beach. Gotta love those puns. All right, episode 23. After the mortician murders the pharmacist in this story of deadly double crosses, what ultimately happens to the mortician? I have no idea. I do not have these episodes memorized. I bet some of you guys do, though. So let's see. Uh, he is killed when one of the kids rams a vacuum tool used by morticians into his body and his internal organs are sucked out. Man, that sucks. Uh, bon appetit. Ah, ah, ah. Episode number 37, Spoiled. In this story about the bored wife of a workaholic brain surgeon, what was the name of the character who lays the cable? Ooh, that's dirty. Uh, his name was Abel, and he was always willing. Ma! Maggot P.I. So let's take a look here. Uh, episode number 51, Werewolf Concerto. In this episode about a werewolf loose in the mountain resort who turns out to be the werewolf expert, and at the conclusion of the show, what does she have for dinner? Uh, D'Angelo is the werewolf expert, and she has the blood of Timothy Dalton for dinner. Good old Timothy Dalton. So this one, I don't know. Just a picture of the Crypt Keeper. Sorry about the glare. Uh, in a towel, as he just got out of the shower. It says, Stars from the Crypt. Oh, I see. These are uh, these are very funny puns on famous actors and actresses. Let's see here. Michelle Viper. Macaulay Chokin. Corey Hangman. Tom Anks. Christian Slaughter. Renona Spider. Faye Done Away With. Meryl Shriek. Glenn Glose. Glenn Ghost and Spike Leach. Then we have what looks like a behind the scenes card. That's kind of cool. And it says Part of the Crypt Creeper's ghastly charm lies in the vast wardrobe. A baseball skit, a mad scientist's lab, even Hamlet, TV or not TV, that is the question, are all made even more outrageous by the Tales wardrobe wizard, Warden Neal. Proving that clothes do indeed make the main yak. <laughs> Neil and his assistant, Melissa Couch, outfit the Crypt Keeper in Hollywood's Finest. And then the last two cards are actually very cool. They are small reproductions of the comic issues that these episodes are actually based on. So I kind of dig that a lot. Uh, on the back it says, Voodoo Drums, Crypt of Terror, August 1950. So it's information about the actual cover. Uh, it's got the artist on it, uh, the stories inside who wrote them, uh, and a uh, synopsis. So that's cool. Uh, then this last one here. So that's pretty cool, guys. I uh, I will admit I like those. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. We'll put those to the side. Next, we got uh, Jaws and Gremlins left. Not sure which one to do. Uh, we'll save Jaws for last. We'll go with Gremlins here. Uh, ten movie photo cards and one stick of bubblegum. That's probably just as gross as the other one. It looks like... I don't know if you can see that. It's like coke dust coming off of it. That's pretty funny. <laughs> oh! Nostalgia! Really gets you going. <laughs> mm, fun. And these are kind of backwards a little bit. Oh, God, it's in my eyes. This is the start of a horror movie. YouTuber opens up old movie collecting cards and dies from uh, bubblegum dust. I'm not even attempting to put that in my mouth. All right. Now we got these all in order. Let's take a look here. Evil of the Gremlins. It says, after nibbling on Roy Hansen's sandwich, the Mogwai forms into a cocoon, and then something... Then something, something quite dangerous, hatches from inside. Unaware of this transformation, Roy becomes the first human victim of Gremlins. 
<coughs> excuse me, that, uh, that bubblegum dust has got to me. Uh, this is one of the best scenes in the movie, The Unruly Gremlins, when they're in the theater watching Snow White, which uh, in the second one they beg and plead to be played. Uh, inside the Kingston Falls movie theater, the Gremlins watch a classic fantasy film, our difficult audience to please. Next we got Mrs. Deagle's Fate, another fantastic scene. It's when her uh, chairlift chair malfunctions and flies her out the window. Mean, miserly Mrs. Deagle uses an electric stair climber to get from floor to floor. But when the gremlins start tampering with the machinery, she is suddenly sent on a wild and fatal ride up the staircase. That's pretty cool. And then we just got a checklist of all the cards. Kind of boring. We'll skip that. Uh, Stripe's final moments. It's a good picture of Stripe there, the uh, leader of the evil gremlins. Uh, Stripe, his skin smoldering, melts like a candle and then falls into the water. Steam rises from the fountain until finally the creature's skeleton arms outstretched spring at Billy. The nightmare is ended at last. Deadly Creatures. Get that one. That one says, The gremlins, loose in Kingston Falls, are up to all kinds of destructive mischief. Can anything on Earth stop them? Oh, and look. The next, it's card on continues Mrs. Deagle's fate, which we have. We have two connecting cards. How about them, Apples? The good guys triumph. That's the uh, end of the movie there, close to the end, because the actual end is when the Mogwai gets picked back up. As Billy and Kate stand before the Fountain Stripe's final resting place, they are joined by somewhat astonished Rand. What an experience! Yeah, what an experience being chased by monsters all night. <laughs> Friend or foe? What are the Mogwai? Where do they come from? The Pelters are understandably curious about the origin of these strange, furry little creatures. That one's kind of thicker than the rest of them. Saved by the Flash! Oh no, by a Flash, not the Flash. Sorry, no crossover event in this one. Kate holds off her gremlin guests with Flash from her camera. Obviously the creatures can't stand bright light. One of the, one of the rules there. And then I got a double. Uh, deadly creatures again. And this one is really destroyed from sitting in the package for so long with that bubble gum. Oh man, that gum. All right, last pack, ladies and ghouls. Uh, Jaws 3D uh, with six cards, one viewer, and one stick of bubble gum that most certainly will kill me. All right, look at the, look at the, look, look look at this. Look at this. What am I supposed to do with this? How is this supposed to work? This is how it works. It's going to be filtered out for you. You can't even see because there's only one lens and it doesn't work that way. But this is and this is a little punch out for the nose. Look at this. We're going to punch this out. There we go. There we go. Now I can take these off, set these on. I can be a very cool version of Morpheus with my no, uh, no clip sunglasses and just wear this on my face. What do you think, guys? Pretty cool? Pretty cool. Let's, let's see if we can view some cards here. Let's see. Whoa! Whoa! Okay, these are going to be terrible if they're all in uh, blue and red, and that's kind of what they look like. So, yeah. Okay, well, there's they're double-sided. So here's the shitty 3D side uh, that you have to be wearing those stupid glasses for. And then there's an actual side, which looks like a scene from the movie. So let's see here. It says, It's a glorious day for all at SeaWorld, the spectacular amusement park aquarium. It's open to the public. So these are sponsored by SeaWorld, I guess. I know it takes place in SeaWorld. So there they are shooting the spear gun at the, the shark there with the crappy 3D. Uh, reporters crowd around Calvin Bucard as the chief executive of SeaWorld welcomes world-famous adventurer Philip Fitzroyce. Yeah, yeah, so that's what those cards are. Uh, a 3D image and a scene from the movie. Oh, here's the death gum. Here's the death gum. We'll, we'll put that aside later for when I want to kill myself after looking at all these cards. Uh, so again, shitty 3D, and the front of it there, and it says, unaware of the giant shark, the SeaWorld Ski Show continues as normal. It's too bad they're about to get eaten forever. That one is actually a really cool drawing, if it wasn't in the silly blue and red 3D. I really like that, actually. Uh, and then the front of it says, Mike Brody and Catherine Morgan enjoy a lover's smooch. They kiss, little kiss, little kissy, kissy, kissy. Uh, there's that one. And then we've got Sea Lovers, which is kind of related to the last card. 
And it says, Introducing Philip Fitzroyce, world famous explorer, adventurer, sea diver, and a special guest at SeaWorld. Good for you. Good for him. And then lastly, we just have a, uh, a checklist of all the cards. And that's it, guys. Uh, yeah, those are the four packs. I hope this was entertaining for you. It was kind of fun to do. A uh, short little video. Oh, we'll be back next week with some news. Lots of news happening over the last couple of weeks, so I can't wait to talk about it with you guys. Uh, well, I've lived a long and healthy life, so death gum, take me home.